Hey there folks, Russ Tyndall here with Blue Line Wood Flags. Well, I have finally finished a project that I have wanted to complete for some time, and that is the assembly of my new CNC machine by Avid CNC. And in addition to the build, to produce this video for those of you scouring YouTube for more information. In order to assemble this beast and get it in the shop, I had to get a new shop. My garage where I was working with my other CNC just wasn't big enough for both machines. You can see my shop transformation, transformation video somewhere up here. The Avid machine I chose is a 48 inch by 48 inch pro model with NEMA 34 stepper motors and an 8.7 horsepower spindle. All Avid machines are in kit form, which you assemble. I really thought this concept was the way to go because if something went wrong and I had to replace something, I would know the machine inside and out because I built it. This machine is the second one I have in my shop and sit next, excuse me, sits next to the other machine. I didn't buy the Avid to replace my other machine, but rather augment it. The other machine is set up for some very specific tooling and laser operations, and I plan on keeping it for those reasons. The Avid was acquired for some heavy duty work and surfacing operations the other machine just couldn't handle. Guys, if you love putting stuff together from kit form, you are gonna love this machine. Assembly of the Avid CNC was fairly easy if you can follow written directions. I'm sure by now you have already visited the Avid site and may have reviewed the assembly instructions. You need a basic understanding of simple tools and you will have to acquire specific tools to complete this build if you don't already have them. The list of required tools is identified in the Avid instructions. It took me nine days to build my machine, working several hours each day. I also managed the camera for this video, which extended the build time a little. This is the first video in a three-part series showing you my process of putting this machine together. The first video covers assembly of the 8020 extrusion base unit. The second video covers assembly of the gantry, linear rails, and bearing blocks assemblies. The final video in the series covers everything else, including stepper motor assembly, Z-axis, spindle attachment, as well as the plug-and-play system. My intent in creating this video series was to provide another resource for those of you thinking of purchasing an Avid machine. I researched Avid quite a bit prior to my purchase, and it was the videos from several other Avid owners on YouTube that convinced me this was the way to go and something I would be happy with. Please do your research and watch those other videos and makers as well. You will pick up tidbits of information from each one of us that will ultimately aid in your machine assembly if you decide to buy an Avid machine. Like any, like any specialized machine, there is a level of knowledge that goes along with it. If you are a newbie, seek out the CNC forums and read the posts. Educate yourself as much as possible. There is a wealth of information out there. I didn't start this hobby until just a few years ago, and I've transformed it into a small business. If I can do it, so can you. Disclaimer time. I have to point out that this machine was not provided to me, and I have not been compensated in any way to make these statements or produce this video. This Avid machine was purchased with my own money. Lastly, whatever you do in your shop, please be safe. Always protect your hearing and especially your eyes whenever you are working with CNC machinery. With that said, let's get on with video number one of three. I hope you enjoy the build. Well, like everybody else, my adventure began with a bunch of boxes showing up from Avid CNC, which included the aluminum extrusion. I was missing one box, but more on that later. Uh, you're going to require a bunch of tools to put this thing together. Um, fairly basic tools, ball end, uh, T-nut drivers, things like that. Um, you can see my iPad there preloaded with the instructions from Avid CNC. I use parts bin holders to separate all my parts for each individual step throughout the process. I found that to be really easy, Keep, keeps things organized. Here I am just putting the T-nuts together and slipping them into the end of the extrusion for the legs and securing them with blue painter's tape. You're going to want to do this because if you don't secure these little T-nuts in somehow with a, a tape of some sort they're going to come flying out with everything you can do so you see me turning this extrusion over these would be falling out everywhere so just tape them he'll make your life easier the end of these legs 
is uh, threaded, as I'm pointing to right there, that's where uh, these little aluminum plates are going to screw into. And on these aluminum plates, you can see right there, uh, on there's recesses for the bolts on one side. So you're going to want to make sure that you orient these plates correctly when you screw them into the end of the leg extrusion. And then drive both nuts on the foot assembly, the little rubber foot, all the way down to the bottom as far as they can go, as I'm pointing to there. Evid doesn't specifically call for this, but I use blue Loctite on these bolts just because I knew that I would never be taking these legs apart. Throughout this build, you're going to see me use a combination of battery-powered drivers and handheld uh, T-nut drivers. Uh, I use the T-nut drivers just to follow up and make sure I'm torquing everything to where I feel it's just perfect. Don't ever count on the, t on the uh, battery power driver to get it perfect for you. And here I am just screwing in uh, one of the foot assemblies. You can see I've got three done. I'm just finishing up on that fourth. fourth excuse me. There's the assortment of bolts for this next step. It's a dual T-nut assembly and you're going to slide the cross members onto the front and back legs. You're going to put this cross member on from front to front and back to back. And they require a little certain measurement from the bottom. I think it's six and a half, six and three quarters of an inch. That's specced out in your assembly instructions. Once you get it where you want it to go, or where you want it to be, then just go ahead and tighten those up. Once you get the uh, cross members on from front to front and back to back, go ahead and put the top T-nuts in, which will hold the extrusion that uh, connects it from all the way from the front to the rear, which is what I'm doing here. This is totally doable with one person. I'm doing this by myself. and moving everything around, just slowly getting it where I want it to get connected. But if you can recruit the help of someone else, it does make life a little bit easier. But it's doable with one person. And here I am sliding the extrusion on the front leg assembly and it's gonna mate up to the back leg assembly here in a second. make sure everything is lined up and flush and square and plumb as they say off camera I go I went ahead and when I once I had it assembled I went ahead and uh, did a corner to corner measurement and it, it turned out to be perfect this aluminum lined up just great avid says don't tighten your your T nuts up in this section where you see me tighten them up right now Evid suggests that you not tighten those up all the way and that's for that measurement that you'll want to take to make sure that it's it's square. Here I am putting the T-nuts in for the uh, cross members which go ahead which which go across the uh, top portion of the base and support your uh, spoil board. These little double T-nuts uh, threw me for a little bit. I got a little frustrated dealing with them compared to the single T-nuts because they have to be put in very slowly and you can only do one side at a time. Just take your time though and you'll get it. My electronics bar didn't arrive with the rest of the boxes originally and I had to come back in and take a portion of my uh, table assembly apart to get the electronics bar in again. But Evid was really good when I noticed that missing they had it shipped out to me within two business days so kudos to Avid for getting that out there. They really work with you if you're missing something. They know that they you want to get going with your build and that you've been waiting a long time for your parts. So here I am just sliding the cross members on, which 
connect the left side to the right side table. And this is a 48 by 48 inch machine and there's five of them that go on. And in securing them, you're gonna see me here in a few minutes, once I get them all slid on, use a uh, dimensional lumber cut at a specific length and clamped in between the aluminum extrusion to get it to a specific perfect measurement. And if you plan on using Avid spoil board uh, for your machine, then you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and use that dimensional lumber and clamp that in place because it actually does put it just perfect where it needs to be. And once you get all your, at least your, your front one in, go ahead and tighten it in. And that's gonna be your starting point for the rest of them uh, down, the, uh, down the length of your machine. Here you can see what I was talking about, clamping the dimensional lumber in there and using that dimensional lumber as a spacer. And then the last part of the base assembly is putting the T-nuts in there and getting ready for the uh, angle brackets, which are your supports, your, your supports for your your legs this 48 by 48 48 by 48 inch machine came with eight of these um, two for each corner or two for each side i should say and it's just a matter of getting them in perfect Here's a picture of what the final product is going to look like, minus the angle brackets. I took this photo before the angle brackets went in, but that's what you're looking for. Join me in the next step where I do the linear rails and gear track and gantry. So stay tuned for video number two.